There we go. Okay. This is Beast IO with WPGN, and today we're going to talk about a game that I had tried to play previously, um, but there was a lot of connection issues. I couldn't, uh, you know, I couldn't get into the game. Um, but coming back to it later, those connection issues seem to have cleared up. The servers are pretty stable, and uh, I can actually play. So let's go over a little bit about you know, what this game is. So this game is called Dauntless. Um, now, it is sort of like Monster Hunter, uh, Monster Hunter Worlds, uh, with a few differences. One of which being, um, it's free to play. Another of which being, instead of only getting three uh, down team members per monster fight, uh, each team member has three resurrects or revives that they can use um, once they're downed on their hotbar. Uh, also, a, one of your teammates can come over and revive you for free. It takes time, uh, and hopefully they don't, they don't get hit in that time. Um, <clears throat> that's one other difference. Uh, and this game does have a cash shop, but before everybody jumps on the bandwagon of, oh, it has a cash shop, it's fucking terrible, this, that, and the other, let me explain. So, yes, the game has a cash shop. Uh, but when you first load up the game and you go to the cash shop you will see a couple of things one of the things is daily login bundle so that that is free um, you get one every day that you log in you don't have to do anything all you have to do is log in uh, and you can also it'll show up in one of these two sections I can't remember which um, but it will say it'll say something like first time player package uh, it's also free and it gives you some loadout slots it gives you a bunch of free cores to use up uh, it gives you some crafting materials you know just an assortment of stuff uh, you know it gives you like a new flare symbol you know just some neat stuff to play around with a couple of transmog items you know things of that nature uh, now, to preface all of this, yes, while the game is free to play, it does have a version of a subscription. Um, now, you cannot outright pay this quote-unquote subscription fee. You have to buy it with Platinum, which is the, uh, the store, the in-game store's currency. So, you know, if you wanted to do that, you would have to come to the store you know, do this, buy Platinum, and I believe the um, subscription or the Elite Pass, as it were, is nine fifty. dollars uh, So you would, you know, you get the $10 Platinum thing, you get a 1000 you know, you have 50 left over, but here's the cool thing. Um, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. So if you look at this Hunt Pass, where you have, you know, level one, level, now there's, there's two things to level in this game. Uh, your Slayer level and your Hunt Pass level. Um, the Hunt Pass does not have anything to do with what monsters you are able to hunt and what you're not. It is simply uh, to give you free stuff for each, you know, or for each other level of the Hunt Pass that you level up on normal mode and if you have the elite pass you get something every level and that could be a uh, transmog skin it could be a die it could be a transmog chip uh, it could be a sword skin an emote some extra patrol chest hair dye some free platinum uh, you know that kind of stuff um, usually it's all cosmetic um, actually I think all of it's cosmetic other than no uh, that's right, the Platinum 
uh, you get escalation boosts as well. Uh, now, if you look at the free version up here, which is what you start out as, uh, you know, you get a dagger emoji for level one. Um, you don't get anything on level two. Uh, level three, you get 25 ace chips, which are used at one of the vendors to fuse cells, which I'll explain later, probably in another video. Um, at level five, you get a silver slayer core. Uh, at level six, you get some bounty tokens. At level eight, you get some bulwark tonics, uh, consumables that you can use in your hunts. Uh, 10, you get 50 free platinum. 11, you get some more bounty. So every other level you get something uh, for free. Now, down here on the Elite Pass, you know, level one you get, not only do you get the dagger emoji, but you also get a free transmog outfit as well. Now, level two, you don't get anything for the free pass, but you get some die for having the elite pass. Level three, you get the ace chips for free. And if you have the elite pass, you get both the ace chips and the transmog stuff. So you get both of them and you know, it, they do stack. So you get both of them every time you level up to one of the milestones. Uh, but uh, the hunt pass, resets every season so as you or i think it's every month something like that so as you say the season ends in 17 days and then the hunt pass will reset they will have different things that you can earn uh, now when you get your hunt pass maxed out you can still gain levels in your hunt pass so for free you'll get one vault coin but if you have elite pass you will get Four and the one for free so you get five total uh, now vault coins if you go to the vault here uh, you can buy things that were previous released previously released in the game but are no longer available in the store uh, so it's kind of like opening up the vault and letting you buy a few things here and there like here's a you know here's an armor skin that you can buy um, and here's a, I think this is an arrival, yeah, an arrival emote for hunts that you can buy. Uh, there's a weapon skin, a lantern skin, uh, an aether, aether, aether motes emote where you catch these little firefly looking things. It's just some fun stuff. Um, now, I know that in some YouTube video comment sections, when people have replied to people playing this game or putting up guides for it, uh, basically crapping on it saying, oh, it's like the Fortnite of Monster Hunter. Um, yeah, kinda. Uh, but let's look at what you're really saying when you're trying to shit on a free game. You know, PUBG can't, you know, PUBG release, they charged, I think, like 30 or $40 for it. It was popular for a very, very, very short amount of time. And then Fortnite released for free. Obviously, you could buy the, you know, in-game rewards chests or whatever. Uh, but it's still popular. So you have a free game that released, you know, and there was a previous version of it, PUBG, that released. The paid version isn't popular hardly anybody's playing anymore the free version it's very popular people hold tournaments there's paid tournaments um, and it's incredibly popular uh, I'm not saying that Monster Hunter Worlds is or was a bad game I think that it was a well-designed game I think that it was released at a bad time they released Monster Hunter World for PlayStation, and then a year later, almost, they released it for PC. So they had already missed their mark when releasing it a year later than PlayStation got it, because, well, let's face it, you know, people that wanted it aren't going to wait a year. They'll find another game to play. A little lagging night. Uh, they'll find another game to play, and they'll just play that instead of paying the $60 plus, you know, another 20 or $40 in DLC to play a game that's going to release a year after that, 
they'll, they'll just play another game. Um, so, if you want to try and crap on the game because it is a free-to-play version of Monster Hunter Worlds, I'm sorry to say, but your criticism is ill-founded and misplaced. Yes, it is very much like Monster Hunter. Difference being, it's free, and... What is this guy's name? DJ Hicks. Um, it's free, and it's a lot more suited for, you know, if you work a job, or if you work two jobs, or if you have a family life, kids, whatever, it's much more suited to jump in, you know, do a couple of hunts, jump out, do whatever you need to do. It's a very, it's, you know, uh, it runs at a faster pace, it's uh, easier to progress, which doesn't really affect in-game all that much, surprisingly. Uh, but Monster Hunter Worlds is very involved, um, it's very slow-paced. You have to do a ton of grinding to get your gear, and to be fair, you do have to do a bit of grinding in this one to get it as well, but it's not anywhere near as severe as Monster Hunter World is, so, you know, if you have less time to play, this would probably be a better game choice for you, as you won't have the struggle of trying to upgrade your gear and constantly being stuck behind because it takes so long. You know, this one you can jump in, literally it takes seconds to log in, uh, it takes seconds for the hunt to load, you know, five, six minutes if you're with a decent team, hunts over, you go on to the next one. You get your rewards, do whatever you're going to do. You know, so it's better in that aspect. Um, now, there are a lot of weapons to choose from. Now, we'll go over here and talk to Wills Borman was the primary weapon crafter. There are a couple of others, but we'll just look at him. He does all of your bladed weapons. So swords, axes, hammers, uh, chain blades, and the war pike. So there's a, um, you know, each weapon is different. Each has its strength and its weaknesses. This is kind of just going to be a very quick beginner's guide to the game. So you know, let's start off with the sword. The sword, it's, it has an easy moveset. Uh, however, it is not the easiest weapon to play with. It's relatively slow. Uh, it's not overly powerful, especially when you're just starting out. It's kind of basic. <coughs> Sorry, my sinuses are, uh. <clears throat> but it's not bad weapon to start with. Uh, the axe. It kind of it kind of acts the way that hammers do in Monster Hunter in the, res in the uh, respect that you have to charge their attacks to do a very heavy hitting attack. Um, they are slower than the sword. Uh, but they do put out a reasonable amount of damage if you know how to use them properly. Or even half properly. They're, they're pretty... They hit pretty hard. Hammers. Uh, literally the slowest... Slowest weapon in the game. Um, it has charges similar to the uh, Switch Axe in Monster Hunter World. Or the... Uh, um, the charge blade with the shield and Monster Hunter 4 and it has a reload mechanic it has a uh, storing energy in the cells mechanic um, it is very slow but it hits very hard and it does have a um, what is that called I can't remember what Monster Hunter called it where you would uh, basically you know execute a filibuster attack with all of your charges in this particular case is kind of like a shotgun effect you know out from your hammer and most people use it to you know interrupt or knock over monsters uh, it, again that has to be charged and the more charges you use out of your cells the more powerful it becomes and you kind of see it sticking out the back there 
All right, uh, War Pike. The War Pike is probably among my least favorites, right next to Hammer. I'm not good with Hammer at all, not even a little bit. I, I just can't with that thing. It's too slow for me. I like faster paced items. Um, and it's not because it's slow. It's not actually that slow. It's mediocre. Uh, but it has this mechanic where you can store charges into it, kind of similarly to the Warhammer, to the hammer. Um, and those charges turn into projectile. And I don't know, the, the couple of times that I tried it, it was just really weird. Um, I never could really get the hang of it. You know, I may come back to it later and experience, you know, experiment with it a little bit. Um, but again, it's not my thing. I would probably be more the sword chain blade guy out of the two of the, you know, the two out of these uh, bladed weapons. Hey, kitty. I see you. It's little ears. All right. Um, now, I have main chain blades, obviously, as you can tell, you know, I've crafted quite a few of them. Uh, chain blades, they do not do a lot of damage on an individual attack or an individual part, uh, but they have quite a bit of reach. Um, they're very fast, and you can accumulate, with your weapon charge, you can accumulate what are called pips, and each pip um, will allow you to execute one of two attacks based on what your um, let, me, let me find one based on what your weapon mod is. So let me get past all the pistols here. All right, here's some uh, here's some chain blades. All right, so Pinger's claws. So I have Reaper's dance. Um, now if I you know hit my special, I fly up into the air, and you know I'll, I'll show you this in a moment. But uh, you fly up into the air and you can either left click, which is your normal attack, to dive into the target and store a charge of Reaper's Dance. Uh, or you can right click and you do a spinning slam attack that consumes any Reaper's, stacks that you, or Reaper's Dance stacks that you have uh, to, you know, do a massive amount of damage to the target if you hit it. Now that's the thing. Um, when you are in the air, you have to aim yourself at the behemoth or the monster and then right click because if you just do it randomly your slam is going to go off in some other direction and even still when you're aiming the monster can move they can get knocked over they can you know trip in a different direction and you miss it and it uses all your stacks and you have to start over which really really sucks uh, but it happens you know when you're playing with a group of three or four people that you don't know and people are not communicating or just refuse to and don't, um, it's very hard to tell what they're going to do and what they're not. Uh, so you kind of have to just play around whatever your team is doing and do the best that you can. Uh, <coughs> so, let's look at equipment. Now, uh, I should probably just go to the equipment crafter. Oh, one more thing to note, um, there are a couple of different weapons. Uh, this lady over here does what are called strikers, which are basically the fist weapons. Um, you know, you're, you're kind of like a kickboxer, martial artist type person, and you have these fist weapons of which, you know, you can also see that I tried a couple of these out and they're okay. I'm not the best with them, but I do all right. Um, I'm, I'm passable at these, not great, but uh, they're pretty cool. Um, they rely on stances, which are three different kinds, and your weapon move list, uh, each combo that you execute successfully with the last attack, not all of the attacks have to hit the target, but the last attack must hit the target in order for it to build a combo, or count as one. And each combo that's different does you know it gives you a different um God, what do they call these things you know what um let me find a let me find an equipment setup that i'm not really using i think it was this one that's kind of shit yeah i was fucking around with this one um 
All right, so let's equip these things real quick so I can figure out what that shit's called. Okay, um... I can't remember what it's called. It's a... It's like a stance, um... And for each one that you have, you can hit your special again and activate it, and it will do different things. Um, but you also have your weapon mod here, which this one is Adamant Bolt, and this one is Titan's Crash, and they do different things. And um, you know, the more stances you have built up when you use these special attacks, the more damage it will do. It will give you different buffs, this, that, and the other. Uh, now the other, the only other weapon so far is over here, and they're called repeaters. They're basically pistols, uh, you, and repeaters come in a few different parts. You have barrels, grips, the receiver chamber, and the prism, which is kind of like the empowerment. Now this over here you don't need to worry about unless you actually own Twin Sons. Uh, Twin Sons is the new repeater they came out with that does not share a classification with any of the rest of them it is a weapon unto itself and we're not going to worry about that because most people don't have them um, so for repeaters you have four different parts that they're made out of barrel grip receiver chamber and prism and all of those do different things different barrels do different elemental damages different grips do different things um, your grip is what gives you your Q special ability and the receiver is what gives you your right click ability and the barrel is what element you do damage with um, on your just on your regular firing click now the prism is kind of just an added little bonus in there like uh, if we look at brilliant prism once charged your next next attack deals 425 radiant damage charge rate increases with higher current health so if you have full health your weapons charge this more often and these are just little added things to give you more damage and some of them are pretty cool uh, that one's fucking utterly and completely useless so it's Glacial Prism um, I haven't messed around with Eclipse yet uh, Brilliant seems to be the best one unless you really really need Snowdrift or Searing uh, Searing is also pretty good I think the two best are probably brilliant or searing, um, but that's how repeaters work. Uh, so, what are these core things that I was talking about? Um, oh wait, no shit, we got to do armor first. Okay, so armor. All right, what's this armor shit that I was talking about? All right, so armor. I'm gonna get a drink here real quick. Because it is really warm in here, and it was really warm today which is fine um, okay so each monster that you defeat will have an armor set proprietary to them that you can build now no if you fight a Skarn a rock fallen Skarn or a heroic Skarn you still only get one armor set for Skarn uh, but the higher you upgrade it it will start requiring pieces of you know the heroic mobs to build uh, so each behemoth you fight will have its own armor set. Uh, the recruit gear is the basic garbage that you start off with. It's pretty useless. Replace it as soon as possible. Uh, anything is better than this joke. Uh, they just give it to you. It's your starter equipment. You cannot upgrade it, um, and you don't need. They don't even give you a helmet. That's kind of like that whole you know you get a free gun when you sign up for the FBI thing. Um, but nothing else uh, so each behemoth you fight will have its own armor set um, each piece of armor will have a perk that it gives you when you wear it so we'll look at Skarns here since it's at the top and I'm not wanting to scroll down um, the helmet gives you now this is upgraded so at base it will give you plus one rank in toughness or tough which I believe is 50, 50 max health and I think 5% increase. I, I think this is basically half of this. Um, now if we move to the chest piece, the chest piece will give you plus one guardian which is 10% of your health 
shields applied to you are also applied to your nearest allies for 15 seconds. So you have a health shield, they have a health shield. The gloves give you would give you plus one to fortress after not taking damage for 10 seconds, gain a 20 health shield. Um, and not, not great. Uh, the boots, you know, another guardian. So you would, if, at base level, if you were just to craft level one of all these and wear them, you would have one, one tough, two guardian, and one fortress. And if you also notice, there is a little symbol um, next to each piece, and all of these have shields on them. Uh, that means that you can slot one defensive cell into each piece of armor. Well, what are cells? Okay, that's coming up very shortly, so stay tuned. Now, as you fight harder and harder monsters, you will notice that the perks that they give you start getting better. Because, I mean, yeah, okay, toughness and, oh, yay, a health shield. Now, you might think that that's, oh, I get a health shield. That's going to help me live longer. No, it does not. Unless you have plus six in Guardian, and you have plus six in Toughness, and you have plus six in Fortress, 10 health points, 20 health points is nothing. You know, a high level monster like Moon Reaver Shrike, uh, or even Scrave, is going to knock through that shield and go right into your health pool. Um, so I, I, I don't really recommend using Skarn's set. There's only one instance that I would recommend using actually a full set of armor like this against any behemoth, and I will explain that in a moment. Uh, but when you start fighting hard, harder behemoths or monsters, you will notice that the perks start getting better, like this one, Aether of Contunement. Lantern, uh, percent lantern charge from attacks. Conduit. After using your lantern's hold ability, grants 6% or, you know, whatever percent attack speed to all slayers for 10 seconds, which means your entire team gets it. Evasion. Increase dodge and vulnerability windows by 14%, and I'll explain that later. And here's another conduit. So if you wore Rift Stalker's full sit, you would get... Uh, at level one, or at, at its base level, you would get two conduit, one evasion, and one either a contunement. Um, and you have a, you know, you have different symbols on here now. They accept different types of cells. Your head and your chest piece both accept a utility cell. Your gloves and your feet both accept a mobility cell. So you can kind of play mix and match and see what kind of build you can come up with. Um, now let's look at an even harder one. Uh, I don't know, Riftstalker's kind of a pain in the ass, so he's, he's a good example. Uh, but let's look at, say, uh, uh, let's see if we can find Razor Wings in here. Or cover back, there we go. Okay, so the help, the help piece, yeah, the help piece. I can't speak. The head piece, uh, the swarm, gives you shell shock resist. Um, not a great perk. Uh, it's used in absolutely no Iceborne, no progression, and no meta builds. Uh, nobody uses Shellshock. Uh, but, let's look at some of the other ones. Now the chest piece now, here's something interesting. This would give you one, you know, at base level, this would give you plus one to Blade Storm, which gives you extra part damage to your attacks. So you have whatever your attacks are doing normally, and then on top of that, you deal whatever damage you have from Blade Storm to the part that you're hitting. So say that you're hitting the tail and you hit it once and you deal 120 damage. And then you have, uh, I think this, okay, so you have one blade storm. So you deal 125 damage to it while wearing the chest piece from this set. 
Now the gloves have conditioning which increases stamina, re stamina regeneration and so do the boots. So at base if you were to wear the everything but the headpiece you would have one blade storm and two conditioning. Um, and each of these sets has different, you know, different things. Stormclaw is not a uh, not a bad one. Energize is pretty good. Aetheric Frenzy is pretty good. Um, insulated, not really needed. Um, but again, you can mix and match different armor pieces in your set to get what you need. Uh, so, what are all these little? symbols and the cell slots and all this crap what what the fuck am I talking about all right so I have a perfect example of what cells are here um, see how there's this little golden symbol I have a core that I can open now it's a daily login core so I don't know if it's gonna give me a cell or not uh, but we'll see so whenever you get a core or more cores you bring them to this machine you hit open and it will display these little bubbles these little droplets on screen and you hit open all or you can click each one you know, if you want uh, okay so I got a bounty token I got three shining arc stones which are used to upgrade armor and weapons and I got th uh, one frenzy tonic consumable so I didn't get any cores um, but I'll show you what a core looks like all right so let's go into equipment um, now you see how these are lit up in different colors like purple, blue, you know, that stuff. Uh, there's even a green. So when you are putting your, here, you know what, let's just strip all of this out. Um, we'll get rid of all of this stuff, that way I can show you how to kind of build a semi-decent um, loadout for when you're just starting to play. Uh, so we'll, we'll get rid of all of, you know, we'll switch all of this back to basic stuff. So, um, weapons. Okay, say I want to use chain blades. Um, and you just, you just barely crafted, um, the Nasher stuff, Rage Hunter. That's a low level monster. Uh, you just crafted these guys. You know, okay, so now we move on to armor and you don't slot your cells right away because you have to have the rest of your armor equipped to know which perks you want to build so okay so we've got raging teeth from nasher and that gives us one rage hunter so now we come to the helmet and say uh you know we we're not fighting a lot of you know elemental stuff or you don't have the stuff to upgrade your elemental gear so we need just basic shit that can survive you know okay shrike down helm that gives us evasion um all right yeah all right we'll go with that um okay so we'll grab that so now we have one evasion and one rage hunter uh so now we need a chess piece okay what chess piece are we going to use um all right well, we notice that this, the Shrike Down Plate, also gives us evasion. Okay, so we'll grab that. So now we have two evasion. Uh, we'll take a look at the hands, see what our options are here. Uh, that gives us warmth, that gives us weighted strikes. Not a good perk anymore, by the way. Uh, rate of strikes is no longer that decent. Uh, this gives us barbed. Uh, say you've crafted some other stuff, but you know you're not doing anything too you know too drastic hey look here's one with two rage hunter okay so now we have three rage hunter two evasion <clears throat> and we need our last one let's look at the feet all right uh where's the nasher feet that's quill shot or quill whatever the hell it is uh this gives us tough but it has a power slot um is there anything else? okay uh Okay, say you have, you know, the fire grease from Ember Main. You know, you made it that far and you've killed him a couple of times. You know, he's got evasion, but it has a uh, guardian cell. We don't want a guardian cell. The evasion would be nice, but guardian cells are essentially pretty much useless. Uh, so we keep looking, we keep looking. That's got predator, but you probably wouldn't have those. Uh, 
because Koshai is pretty later in the game, Rift Stalker is later in the game. Uh, Adrenaline, Warmth, Tough, uh, Fortress, <clears throat> Bloodless, uh, Rage, Insulate. Alright, so our options are kind of limited, so just because we want the extra power. So you know what? No, we'll, uh, we'll stay with Boreas's March. Um, that's a fairly easy one to get. You get it earlier in the game, so we'll stick with that. And that gives us Iceborne, but it has a technique, so... Alright, um, Lantern, you probably haven't crafted that yet, so we'll go with, uh, I don't think that has a slot yet. No, we're not going to go with Recruit's Lantern because it doesn't have a slot. Um, you'll probably get Scarns first, so we'll just use that. Alright, so now we have, um, let's see, one, two, three Technique cells to fill. We have one, two utility cells to fill. We have one movement and one power. All right, now um, let's look at what we got. Uh, Rage Hunter, okay, so we have three of those. That in increases our damage versus enraged behemoths. Uh, so it looks like our set is kind of going to center around that. Um, now I'm not going to use a bunch of expensive cells. I'll use like maybe one because I think they give you one in the uh, day in the starter package so uh, we'll just assume that they give you a rage hunter cell um, so we'll find our power slot which is in the hands we'll do that and we'll find rage hunter so now we have plus six rage hunter which is the highest in any perk that you can go right now so now we have that uh, so we don't need to worry about any more Rage Hunter. We don't need more than six. Uh, so we can now attend to our other slots. We've only got one movement, speed one. So let's see what our options are there. Uh, say we've got two evasion. Um, okay, now you might have like a plus two evasion. So we'll put that in there. So now we have four evasion, which is increases the dodge and vulnerability window or the iframes by 28%. Which, to be fair, if you're just starting the game, is great. If you're in the middle somewhere, probably anywhere between 20 and 25, still pretty good. Um, but as you get into higher and harder fights, you'll obviously want that at 6. But 4 for now is good. We'll, we'll, we'll go with that. Um, we're just going to completely ignore... Iceborne for now because we have no uh, we have no protection slots or we have no guardian slots so now let's look at our technique technique is where a main source of your damage is going to come from and each one of these different techniques does, cells does different things and it will depend very much on what uh, weapon you're using you know that depends on that 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 governs which cells you're gonna want to take so uh, something like chain blades um, you want predator something like repeaters you want predator uh, reason being you don't get hit as much as you would another weapon chain blades and repeaters are very fast repeaters you can stay relatively at range so your ability to avoid attacks is better uh, while chain blades you are very fast and if you have a good stamina regen you don't really have to worry about taking damage unless you run out of stamina you don't see an attack coming yada 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 the thing with predator is that see like if we look at it here if you get hit you lose the buff and you have to wait another or you have to spend another 15 seconds doing whatever you're doing not getting hit to gain it back um, but it's a good option for chain blades now we're not going to use that because I'm going to try and do something a little more practical with you all here because uh, as I'm, I'm trying to explain 
and make things as user friendly for people that are just joining the game or are new to the game, are low level, uh, have interest in having start have interest and in haven't started playing yet. Uh, so early game, your focus, you want to break as many behemoth parts as possible. Reason behind that is you're going to need them to craft your stuff. So let's look for one that increases damage to parts. And that's going to be this little dude right here called Bladestorm. Um, now there are better sets for this, but you don't get those until a little later in the game. So we're just going to kind of go with what we've got. So we slot one Bladestorm in there. We move to our next techniques. So we slot a blade storm in there. Now we've got plus four blade storm. 20, plus 20 part damage after dodging through an attack. Now pay attention ladies and gentlemen, this is incredibly important to make this build very viable early game. After dodging through an attack, your next attack that you successfully hit with, by the way, deals plus 200 part damage. And that's at level four, which is totally attainable at low level. Uh, now, when you get it up to six, you get 40 part damage flat out. And then after dodging through an attack, your next attack deals 400 part damage, which is massive. Um, so we'll see if we have a third blade storm cell. And I don't know if I do doesn't look like it so we're just gonna have to go with that at four uh, so we have one that we can throw in here and having one in there is better than having it blank so always please I implore you always toss something in there because having it blank is just wasting the opportunity to have passive buffs uh, so Let's take a look at what we've got. Okay, well, you know, you may or may not have this many, you know, you may or may not have this many cells. Uh, depends on how much you play. So let's take a look um, at lower level. You're probably gonna have cunning. Um, you're pr you might not have wild frenzy. You'll probably have a savagery cell uh, you may or may not have an adrenaline cell, but those, I, you know, um, we'll go with savagery. That's a pretty, a pretty good, that's a pretty good flat pick. It just increases your damage to wounded parts. So 40% damage versus wounded parts and wounds will happen either way. You're gonna break something. Somebody's gonna break something. So whenever you hit it, you get 40% more damage. You can't go wrong there. Especially when it's just a throwaway because you have an extra slot, so that works. Okay, so last is our utility. Um, now this is kind of important. Either a attunement, uh, you're going to find that that is one of the mainstays for any build that you're doing. Uh, most builds will have either a attunement 6. Uh, most builds will also have conduit six. Uh, so, and you you'll probably get you know two plus three conduit cells within the first you know tw twenty levels of the game, which you can literally do in a day. It's not hard. Um, so you know we'll just say that you've got those. You know you stick in, and even if you don't, um, you know even if you got like maybe one plus two and another you know little shitty plus one, toss it in there. You know, having three is better than having zero, and it's still better than, you know, it, it, it's still better than nothing. Uh, so, but we're going to go with Aether Gatunman. I'm going to tell you why in a minute. And I thought I had two of those, but apparently I do not. Uh, so we'll add, our, we'll add our next plus two, which gives us five. So that gives us 40% lantern charge from attacks. And that's any attack, so... Fast attacks, fast attacking weapons, charge quickly, so on and so forth. So now we've got all our cells figured out. Uh, you'll want your consumables, um, the Slayer Flask that 
heals you, you cannot replace, so that's always going to be there. So really, you only have three consumables to set. You can slot grenades, you can, you know, you can slot frenzy tonics, aether drive tonics. Uh, aether drive tonics is always good. Frenzy drive, or frenzy tonics, always good. Um, since I switched to a melee build for this, we'll want to change this. And uh, we're going to do life steal. Uh, life drain. Now you won't get that until a little later, but um, I think it gives you like 30 or something for reaching one of the milestones, so you'll have some laying around. And it's a really good one in clay. You know, say you're, you, you, say you get into a party and you just have complete fucking potatoes for teammates. And they're running the monster over you and you're just getting hit right and left or you're just not having a good day uh, life drain tonic you can pop one of those and every time you hit the mob you gain life back so not a bad choice all right so our power level is 114 our resistance is fucking retarded because i upgraded all my shit way too much uh, but that's what we're gonna go with <coughs> And we're going to go fight. Um, hmm. What are we going to fight, guys? Uh, let's just... No, I don't want those. Oh, shit. Uh, pursuit, that's what I wanted. Alright, let's let's go fight Mr. Ratface here. We'll do a private hunt um, to begin with so you can get kind of a better idea without having to watch everybody else flail around like idiots. Now, this is going to take me a little longer because I'm not overpowered. I mean, yes, technically I'm overpowered for the hunt. But as you will quickly find out, just because you have twice the amount of weapon power and twice the amount of armor, or three, four, five times the amount of armor, than the mob recommends, that doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. That just means that you deal a little more damage to it and you take a little less damage from it. Um... Mobs can still kill you, even though you are over the recommended amount of armor or weapons. Uh, take Dread Frost, Boreas. Uh, you get hit by him, it's still gonna hurt. Uh, Frostback Pangar. You get hit by him, still gonna hurt. Uh, Heroic Hellion will murder your ass. All right. So as you see. Um, yeah, I've got the little pip things up in the top left. I have four. You always start out with four fully charged, which is kind of nice. Um, and I forgot to set my mod, motherfucker. All right, so uh, we're gonna kill him real quick, and then we're gonna go set our mod. Or actually, you won't have a mod, so we're gonna do one fight with no mod because you won't have one. I think I still have Reaper Stance in there, but we don't have any like Hurricane Blades or any of that. I heard him. Where is he? It's a little shit. Is that him? No. Uh, I gotta run around and find him. Now you want to hit as many of these little blue orb things as you can, because it adds to your lantern charge, as you see up there. Um, and you have two abilities on your lantern. One is just a you know a tap of the key, and one you have to hold the key to get it to do what it does. And there are two separate abilities. So the one I've got on now uh, is Scarns, and that's the one the first one you'll probably build, I think. Where is this little bastard? Jesus. Uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> so we're just going to use that one. Now one gives you a health shield. Uh, one get Is that him? What is that? Anyway, uh, one gives you a health shield. One gives you a shield of stone, which does damage to whatever is near you. And I don't know where he is. Oh, there he is. Alright. Come on, buddy. So we'll add our health shield. We'll pop our Aether Dry Potion. Uh, 
has the special left click. We want to do that more than a few times. So you got four stacks built up. Oop, got hit there. Alright, so we got six stacks. Right click, boom, big attack. I have like no stamina regen, this is terrible. <laughs> Half health left. Jesus. This is what you get for bringing like low level weapons, but this is what you're gonna deal with, so I decided to do a. You know. Try and give you an, ac an accurate experience. Come on, do your flippy. There. Broke something else. Come on. Oop, missed that one. So there you go, that was without a weapon mod, um, that was with a low level weapon, I think that was level 1, not even plus 1, it's plus 0. Now this is why we want to break parts. Sharpen slapper, uh, bonus 2 hides, 2 or 5 shin plates, uh, hides for elite pass, got a couple of rage teeth, a nasher hide more parts you break, the more pieces you get at the end. So now that we've got all that, <coughs> I can explain weapon mods and mastery. <coughs> so, come on game. Alright, I can, I can just stand here and do it. Um, so your weapon mod will be you know, you click your weapon, and it, you know it'll say no mod equipped, which you can click this, and it will bring up a list of mods that you currently have available. The first one you will get for chain blades is lightweight chain, dashing towards the behemoth reduces the stamina cost of dash by 50%. Um, 
if that's the only one you got use it again it's better to have a mod in there than to not uh, when you get hurricane blades use those uh, when and then you'll get the next one I think at mastery level 16 or something and it's called uh, razor's edge or sharper I can't remember it's something razor uh, serrated blades that's it and uh, you want to use that so you want to use the best one that you have available now these specials uh, this is your this this is my right click ability uh, my left and right click ability when I would dash in do a little bit of damage it gives me a stack that's the left click when I would do the spin in the air and slam down on him that's the right click that's Reaper Stance uh, you'll get another one called Cruel Rift Strike which teleports you forward and strikes dealing 75 damage it always critically strikes can teleport through behemoths um, nobody uses this uh, Reaper Stance is almost always better so there is that uh, but a major part of our ability to kill him so quickly was these perks rage hunter when he enraged which I don't think he actually got to uh, we would have done more damage uh, we got our lantern speed you know boosted we could use our shield more we could use our little swirly rock thing more blade storm helps us break parts uh, evasion helps us avoid damage savagery increases damage to resist wound parts all damage 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 um, you know that's why we were able to take him down so quickly using weapons that aren't even plus one yet because of those perks uh, so now you know say you gather it up a few parts you come in and you'll find this out uh, you can upgrade them so Okay, you know, you want to upgrade, you know, so you got one of these guys. Um, Shrike's Fly, or Flight of the Shrike is actually not a bad, uh, it is not a bad option. When you fight Shrike, you'll think he's the biggest pain in the ass in the world, but it would kind of be worth it uh, early game to farm him a couple of times and build this weapon. It's not a bad weapon and all of the weapons have the same unique effects and I think they even have the same yeah they have the same normal perk as well so whether you build a hammer chain blades pikes or doesn't matter uh, they're all gonna have conditioning and they're all gonna have you know a unique effect of dodging deals 50 bonus damage and part damage uh, so each weapon from a behemoth doesn't matter whether it's the hammer or the chain blades the axe the sword they will always have the same perks assigned to them so keep that in mind that's something to you know, something to think about um, but then you come in and you build them uh, now if you're just starting off with chain blades <clears throat> I would recommend probably I think the first two you're gonna have access to is probably Nasher and Quill Shot um, I would go, yep, yeah, I would go Nasher over Quill Shot, uh, for early game. Next ones you're going to have access to are probably, where is it, uh, Boreas, where is he? Boreas, it was Boreas. Uh, now these are actually really good, gives you conditioning, uh, frost price again grant you more damage it's not a bad weapon uh, comes with one defensive slot and one power slot not the greatest but once you've done some fiddling with cells and whatnot you'll be able to work around that fairly easily uh, Drask great weapon awesome weapon for breaking off tails awesome for generating lantern um, electric is also good versus pretty much anything except obviously an electric behemoth because of the stun chance um and remains blades very good uh in front of those fangs from hellion very good <clears throat> this guy right here this this carabrax wings this is one of probably the best parts breakers right now in the game um 
as far as I've played anyway. I haven't gotten to some of the higher level behemoths yet, but I found that they're a very, very good option. Um, and they're good against electric too, because they're earth based. Uh, now we should probably just touch on that for the last part of this video. Um, resistances. So if we come to the hunt board over here and we say, okay, well, I need to hunt blaze behemoths. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll say Hellion recommends 275. Okay. So we go in and we go, all right, well, I need some fire armor. So we'll go over to our fire armor. Okay. So I've got, I uh, now this is, this takes quite a bit of work. Uh, I have 10, 9, 9, 9, and my pistols are at 427 because they're just fucking ridiculous. Um, resistances. Unless it is a neutral behemoth, each monster will be weak or resistant to a particular element. So fire behemoths are weak to ice. However, when you have fire gear, you take less damage from fire behemoths. So, see I've got the whole, um, I think these are ember mains. Pretty sure they're ember mains. But uh, I've got this whole set here. So now let's go look at the hump board now that I have that equipped and see what it says. You know, uh, okay, blaze behemoths, hellion. So I have 507 over 275 and 570 over 275 because I am getting a bonus because I am wearing armor and using a weapon that is A, resistant to fire and B, does more damage to fire creatures. Uh, so that is always something to keep in mind. Um, now you don't have to wear you know, always wear the resist gear if you are confident in your dodging skills. Uh, you know, say we want to use this set, right? We're not going to have as much resistance to it or do as much. Well, we'll probably do about the same amount of damage, to be honest. Um, so now I've got 420 over 275, which means, yes, the armor is a little weaker to it, but say it really has stats that you want, that's fine. If you can get out of the way, execute your attacks well uh dodge and whatnot yeah you're gonna hit you're gonna get hit sometimes or sometimes you're gonna run through lava or an ice mine or whatever shit happens um but you know as long as you meet that requirement and you are confident in your skills with your weapon and your ability to move it doesn't make a difference now if you want to play on the safe side and you want to do fire behemoths wear fire gear and use a nice weapon if you want to fight ice, wear ice gear and use a fire weapon, so on and so forth. Um, if you want to play it on the safe side, but I'm just telling you that at that point, there are very, <coughs> there are very few full sets from one particular behemoth that are going to give you really good, really good stats. Um, you know, it's just some food for thought there. Uh, so that's kind of a beginner's guide, Dauntless. Um, Every day you'll be able to run around and collect these little, these little tears from these owl lantern things here. Um, that'll give you hunt bonus XP. Um, not going to explain trials. You will learn about that through playing. Uh, you have a potion crafter down here, which is uh, Boson, Boson Marcus. Um, Katrina, I don't remember if she actually crafts anything. Uh, no, she just gives you a basic overview of all the weapons. Uh, let's see, you've got your style dude over here, which it will try and direct you to every time your hunt pass levels up, but you don't have to run to him every time your hunt pass levels up when it levels up and you get the little flashing thing on screen. You just hit P, you hit claim reward, and you hit escape. You don't have to run over here every time. It's going to tell you to do it the first time, and it'll want you to do it after that, but you don't have to. And once you claim the reward, it'll go away, and it'll shut up. Um, who else is important here? Let's see. Uh, these buildings are pretty much empty, other than some guys standing around doing nothing. Um, okay. Uh, this lady, I don't... 
I nope, she doesn't do crafting. Good. She's just a quest person for now. Uh, okay. Uh, the repeaters dude right here will allow you to craft grenades if you do part of his storyline. Um, this lady over here crafts the fisticuff weapons or the stragers. Uh, Moira here does armor and this dude over this way does all of your blade weapons and hammers. Uh, so everything's kind of in this little area and you'll get to know it very intimately. Um, and sadly right now the rest of the city is just kind of here for looks. Uh, there's this big pagoda type thing that you can't actually go into. Um, you can't interact with anything. I don't know what this does. I think they're just lamps. Uh, you got another core breaker here. Uh, you got some, you know, some little buildings and shops and don't have anything in them yet. I don't know if they plan to put anything in them or not. Uh, you got the docks. There's a sewer pipe over there. And, oh, and, oh, 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 this guy. Okay, middleman. I almost forgot about him. How could I forget about him? Uh, middleman, you can come to buy cells from, and he will have one plus three, one plus two, and one plus one, and they'll change every week. Uh, and they cost <coughs> either platinum or aether dust. So if you have a bunch of cells that you don't need, you can go to my cells. You can, you know, see you have a bunch of these pieces of junk. Uh, let's find a really crappy one. Um, okay, so I have a couple of these, right? Say I don't want one of these. So we just hold on it and it gives you aether dust. And you can use the aether dust to purchase the cells. Uh, so say you really, really wanted another overpower cell, but you had a bunch of useless cells that you're probably never going to use. Uh, you break them down and you buy it with Aether Dust. So you click on it and it would ask, do you want to buy this with Platinum or do you want to buy this with Aether Dust? And of course, always use the Aether Dust method if you can. Platinum is kind of expensive and even if you're on the Hunt Pass, Elite or Free, you don't get it all that often. Um, so it's a precious commodity. Now when you want to improve a cell, like say you have two plus ones, let's see if I can find a decent one to fuse here as an example. Um, now don't fuse two plus threes. That is a waste. Uh, plus three is the highest that a cell goes, I believe. Um, so don't waste your time doing that. Okay, so let's see, let's look at our technique cells, because I know there's a few in here that I would really like to upgrade. Uh, that's Barb, this is Blade Storm, Cunning, we don't really need any more Cunning cells, Evasive Theory, Merciless, uh, Molten, I only got one of those. Uh, how many Savagery cells do I have? I have three Savagery cells, so we're not going to use those, obviously. Um, there's another Savagery cell, holy shit. What fucking do I have any how many predator cells do I have? I have one. Okay, so we'll use predator. Um, Alright, so I have two predator cells. You click, click, it'll ask you if you want to fuse. You hold that down, say yes. Now normally this will take to fuse two level ones, I believe it takes yeah, it takes about a little less than a day, real time. Um, now that's not logged in time, you can log out of the game and it'll still keep ticking and when it's done you just go collect it. Uh, or if you have your ace chips like you can get from the hunt pass and you say you need it right then, uh, you got an awesome build you're working on and you really really need that extra plus one. You know, you can say, okay well I have X amount of ace chips, I can speed it up, I can pay ace chips to speed it up, and then it'll switch to giving you the ability to collect it. So now I have a plus two predator cell. Uh, predator is good if you know what you're doing. If you don't, stay away from it. <laughs> it's pretty much that simple. So um, yeah, I just, for the sake of explaining that, I just created a predator cell, which I probably needed but don't really use. I know that sounds weird, but you, you know you'll you'll figure it all out. Um, 
so basically that's it now uh I will briefly cover the different types of hunts. You have Pursuit, which is the only one that you will be able to do if you've just started the game. Um, and as you fight more behemoths and harder behemoths, more of them will unlock. I think like a neutral you start out with and you'll get Lesser Nasher, Lesser Quill Shot, Nasher, eventually you get Shrike, regular Quill Shot, Rage Tail Nasher, and so on and so forth. You know, you get the idea. Um, now eventually you will open up what are called patrols. Now this is important. And the reason that this is important is because patrols have bonus rewards. Now say you need frost orbs to make the rest of the boreas armor or to upgrade it. Okay, so you can go into loot. The base rewards that you get for completing the patrol without everybody failing and dying is 10 Frost Orbs, 10 Slayer's Boon, which is a crafting reagent, same with Heart Lily. You'll get 200 Rams, basically 200 gold, and you will get 10 XP towards your hut pass. Now the patrol bonus also gives you another 10 Frost Orbs, so for doing one Frost Patrol, I will gain 20 frost orbs and whatever parts I break off the monster whatever bonuses you know aside from these things I get so that is what patrols are for they will give you the orbs to upgrade your gear now when you start getting into higher gear you'll have dire patrol which gives you these dull arc stones and then eventually heroic patrols which give you the shining arc stones and word uh, uh, not word of wisdom, but fair warning when you get up to plus nine, Favorite plus slayer. ten items, it's going to start getting very expensive very quickly. Let me show you what I mean. So these Ember Main Blades are a plus nine. Sixty Shining Arc Stones, twenty four Dull Arc Stones, four hundred gold, which isn't a whole lot, uh, two Blood Soul Shards, which are hard to get. Uh, three ember horns which are not hard to get but they're slightly annoying and 11 blaze orbs so you will need at least one dire hunt one fire one blaze hunt and let's see an average of three or four heroic hunts breaking the correct parts and getting the drops that you need so roughly you're looking at seven hunts just to make level plus 10 on these weapons. So be prepared to do a bit of grinding. Uh, that said, I think I have covered everything in a what seems to be an hour and 15 long minute or, or hour and 15 minute long crash course on Dauntless, what it is, what you have to look forward to. Um, and as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, which seems like it was years away now, um, I know that I have left some pretty blunt comments about people saying that it was the cheap rip-off version of Monster Hunter. And I would like to say that all those comments I made in reply to you guys, I stand by. The reason that I say that is Phoenix Labs put a lot of work into this game it runs well it operates well yes it is similar to Monster Hunter but it's not a bad game if you're a Monster Hunter fan that's fine I loved Monster Hunter I played all of them at one point or another now I don't own a you know I don't own a um, 3ds anymore uh, but I used to. I used to own all of them. I still own Monster Hunter Worlds. Um, I have no problem with Monster Hunter World. I do have a problem with the fact that just because other people like one particular game that they think another game that's similar to it is a piece of shit and that's simply not true. The reality of the matter is that you're so narrow-minded you're the piece of shit not the game. So, 
another blunt comment from me. Just fuck off with that shit. Nobody cares. Nobody likes hearing that. You're not doing yourself any favors. You're making yourself look like an asshole in your comments. Um, so, yeah, I stand by everything that I said. I'm, I'm not backing down from that. Uh, but for anybody who wanted a crash course in, you know, what Dauntless is all about, um, go ahead and give this a watch. Uh, I will try to make more content in the future about it, maybe do some weapon guides, even though there are plenty of them out there, I will eventually do them and add mine to the piles, and I'm sure that they can probably submit them a hell of a lot better than I can. Um, but I make videos because I enjoy it, so you know, if you guys want to watch them, uh, like, comment, subscribe, whatever you feel like doing, and I will see you in another video.